Blog Talk Radio. Conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Um, I, this is Chris, and I'd like to welcome my co host, Amelia Samara, to the program. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris. Hi, listeners. It's good to be here. Um, I hope today's program will go well with no sound hitches. For those people <laughs> who are listening to us in the chat room, Perhaps if there is any sound issues, you would just type in and let us know. We have Eileen listening on the phone, so um, maybe she would let us know as well if there's any sound issues. So far, so good, I think, Chris. Okay, maybe let's I'll begin by... Go ahead. Well, I was going to begin by maybe making my announcement. Will I do that now? No, let me do this first, and then we'll okay. get right into those announcements. And I just want everybody to know that the goddess then asks, if this is the nature of the universal self, then who is it to be worshipped? Who do I invoke and who do I meditate upon? To whom do I offer oblations? To whom do I sacrifice? If everything is divine and consciousness merges with that divine essence, then what happens to the distinction between worshiper and worshipped? The Lord who shines in us all replied, O Goddess, the practices you are speaking of refer only to the externals. When you enter into the great self, All prayers go on inside you spontaneously, without ceasing. In reality, all songs of gratitude and ecstatic love are resonating in every particle of creation at every moment. When you are established in this recitation, you are listening and you hear them. And that was a reading from the Radiant Sutras. So, yes, yes, welcome, everyone, to this conversation. And, yes, please, Amelia, make your announcements. Okay, Chris, and thank you very much. Um, I would like to make an announcement, and that is to let you know where you can go if you would like to make a donation to contribute towards the work that Chrism does. Um, the place you can go is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you would see a donate button, and it's very easy from there. Donations are very, very welcome, but we'd like you to know that there is no pressure for you to donate, and don't feel that you have to. But if you are in a position to donate, and if you would like to, then donations are, of course, gratefully received, because this is the means by which Chrism can continue with the work that he does. He doesn't charge for anything that he does, and so donations are his only means of income. So I'm going to give you, again, that address. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. So thank you very much, and that's me done, Chris, and I'm looking forward to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia Santara, and uh, I would like to thank Mary and Eileen for listening on the telephone, and I'd like to I'd like to say thank you to all the listeners that are in the uh, chat room at this point, and for those of you who are listening in the future, I would like to say hello to everyone listening in the archive. Uh, today's program is is multi uh, pronged, so to speak. 
it's going to refer to at first a nutritional update. Uh, with regards to your Kundalini awakening, it can really, really, really begin to absorb uh, minerals and nutrients from the food that you eat at a greater level, at a greater extent. And even though I, I've mentioned this in other conversations before, I just feel that it's something that is worth reminding people. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. And, and uh, you know, drink uh, the kind of fluids that give you plenty of electrolytes. Uh, these are coconut water has electrolytes, Gatorade has electrolytes, watermelon has electrolytes. I mean, lots of different uh, natural foods minus the Gatorade has uh, has the, an electrolytic uh, uh, component to them that is very helpful. If you take a vitamin mineral tablet, um, uh, I would suggest you do that. Uh, there are plenty of them out there. Just make sure that they give you a good smattering of all the different uh, minerals that we use in order to have uh, energetic uh, um, interactions uh, with, with our nervous energy and, and some of the other uh, levels of energy that we have. So stay hydrated. Eat watermelon every day if you can. Now, in the northern hemisphere right now, watermelon's in season. So those of you who have the ability to get an organic one, then I'll strongly suggest that you get an organic one. And if there isn't that possibility, then I will leave it to you to to determine uh, what's the most appropriate uh, watermelon for you to get. Um, I will suggest that you get one that has seeds in it. I will suggest that you get one that is not genetically modified through biochemistry or through biotechnology. Uh, they've got watermelons that they grow into squares just for the convenience of packagers, for crying out loud. Uh, so eat the watermelon every day in the morning with a good breakfast. Your kundalini will tell you pretty much whether or not she wants you to have more dairy or less dairy, more wheat or less wheat, more gluten or less gluten. She'll always pick the organic, just like any animal. If you... If you bring an animal up to uh, uh, GMO, artificial butter, and then you give them the option between that and you give them uh, real, natural, organic butter, they're always going to go to the organic butter. Even the ants know to do this. You know, so take, take a lesson from nature and try to eat as organically as you can. No pesticides, no herbicides, no fungicides, nothing of a of a massive death ratio that, that our farmers are coerced into putting on their crops or do so of their own accord. Um, I just got finished traveling uh, uh, with uh, Laia Symphony, or Leia Symphony, her name's Leia, and uh, we traveled from Santa Rosa to Mount Shasta, and uh, you know I had a very big opportunity, very wonderful opportunity to see uh, what the farmers are doing in the Central Valley of California at this time. And as I, I farmed for 15 years, I know pretty much exactly what they're doing, and they're planting and they're and they're putting you know they're putting uh, certain chemicals in the water, certain forms of. Uh, pesticide and herbicide and fungicide and and uh, I want to encourage everyone not to eat this toxic food do not eat the rice that is not organic do not eat anything that is not organic if you can help it if you can help it I know not everybody has the uh, stability to an organic uh, grocery store in their area, or even just a little mom-and-pop organic store. They're not that common, so I understand. Uh, do your best, follow your kundalini, and have that watermelon as, as much as you can in the morning. I recommend a slice, you know, one slice of it, and that will, kill, that will help keep you uh, with a, a balanced adrenal kidney output uh, during the early part of your kundalini awakening. So, those of you that have had this two years, uh, do this. Have that fruit in the morning. 
uh, stay hydrated, stay well balanced and and within your nutritional needs, your nutritional guidance. Uh, I'm going to suggest that everybody who is having Kundalini, uh, but especially those that maybe have gone into more of a Kundalini syndrome type of scenario, to take a vitamin B100. So it's a B100 complex. So, you know, all the vitamin Bs, you'll have 100 milligrams. You'll have, you know, uh, higher levels of inositol and lysine and choline bitartrate and, and all of these other constituents that are very, very helpful uh, for the kundalini and, and the body to maintain a level of healthy balance of nutrients uh, within that system. The body, like you're feeding a sacred temple, Make sure, one, that you do feed it, number one. Uh, unless your kundalini is, is giving you a you know, different signal, make sure that it's the kundalini that is doing that. Uh, and uh, take your vitamin complex, as I just described. Also take a vitamin C complex, which consists of 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Now, if you're... You know, if you weigh about 100 pounds, you know, maybe 110, then you can take 500 milligrams. But either way, you want to have these other constituents with your vitamin C. And you always take your vitamin C with food. So take this in the morning along with the uh, the B12. Um, you need to have, uh, so we'll just use 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, which is ascorbic acid. And then you'll have... Five 500 milligrams of citrus bioflavanols, okay, spelled the way it sounds, bioflavanol. And then you'll have 500 uh, milligrams of hesperidin, H-E-S-P-E-R-I-D-A-N-D-E-A-N, uh, and rutin, or U-T-I-N. You'll have 100 to you know, probably about 100 milligrams of rutin. And uh, those are the main constituents that I would strongly recommend that you have within your vitamin C complex. You can take these vitamins every other day. You don't have to take them typically every day. And I do not, you know, I do not want to insist on the daily intake of vitamins because I know that your kundalini is changing what the kidneys do, changing what the adrenals do, changing what the liver does. So we don't need to to push things too far, too fast, and too furious. Once again, keep yourself very hydrated. If you're if you're eating meat at the moment, continue to eat meat. If, if all of a sudden one day comes along and you're eating meat makes you feel like you're going to vomit, well then stop eating the meat and start going for the vegetables and the fruits and the nuts things of that nature, <clears throat> and vice versa. If, uh, the vegetables, fruits, nuts, and things of those natures don't uh, appeal to your appetite, and yet a steak does or some sort of a, of a meat, uh, condensed, uh, densely packed protein does, then you take that and you eat that. That is exactly what the community is to, to do. Do your best not to use hair products. Do your best to keep your scalp massaged with your fingers, fingertips. Remember, there are chakras in your fingertips. So when you massage your scalp, not only are you applying pressure and moving skin around the skull, you're also emitting light into the uh, into scalp through the fingertips. Really, massage the scalp at least once a day. You know, it's easy to do when you're in the shower, but you can do it outside of the shower as well. Don't use the hair products. If you can find a really clean and natural type of stuff like, uh, let me get the box here, this one. I use uh, vegetable-based Grandpa's Wonder Pine Tar Soap. And they feel the need to put in there that it lathers white. Um, Excellent for bathing, showering, shaving, and shampooing. All in one, folks. You've heard it here first. Uh, that actually is a good soap. It's a good soap for many of the different levels of detoxification that the kundalini will bring up a person. Get out and exercise. Get some fresh air in your lungs. If you live in a big city, do it earlier in the morning when, there is, when there's much less traffic about 
you still get product increases in the early morning hours in the big cities, just like they do out there in the countryside. Get out there in that clean, beautiful air. Take a walk and start doing some Qigong movements. One of those Qigong movements that I'll uh, suggest that you do, as you're walking, make a sharp inhale through the nose of air into the lungs, and at the same time, raise your arms straight up over your head with, with, uh, with power, with with, uh, oh gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? With, you know, in a very rapid gesture, raise those arms up as you inhale that air, and then as you exhale the air, uh, lower the arms, and then as you inhale, raise them up really fast up over your head, and as you exhale, let them down. And you can do this for a good 20, 21 minutes. As you're walking around the park or standing out, out on your balcony or However, you would manage to do this in, say, inside of a, a larger city environment, an urban environment. For those of you out in the country, uh, well, you know exactly. You can just go right out into the field, right out into the meadow, right out into your backyard, and, and you can uh, walk the same exact way with the same type of breathing. And this is really, really, really going to help you. Uh, this helps your chi. This helps... Uh, the, the, the chi energy, which is another constituent of the kundalini energies. And this is also a prana bursting or a, a prana feeding technique. And so, you know, you're really, really partaking of a, of a combination of energies and a combination of frequencies as you do this. And this you can consider as feeding the kundalini. This is nurturing your, your energetic anatomy. It's really, really, really good, really important for you to do. So remember this and try this. And, yes, I know it's wonderful and you're so warm and it's nice to sleep in. And, oh, my gosh, some of us have to just do a countdown, 10, 9, 8, and then I'm going to get up. But I do want you to get up and get up early in the morning and feed your kundalini. Feed your energetic anatomy. Exercise it. Uh, another brief reminder is if you nothing with your kundalini and say say you've taken my shakti pot to say that uh, the kundalini has been coming to you of it and so on. say all of these things and then you do nothing with it you just sit on the couch and you play your video games or you watch tv or you you know you don't do anything to help other people and a stagnant energy response is not without pain it can be quite painful and it can be very 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 devastating and so i really really, really want to implore you to get out and help another person. Walk somebody across the street, buy somebody their groceries, buy them a lunch, uh, wash their car, help them in some way out of the goodness of your heart, out of the goodness and kindness of your kundalini. You lift a hand to help that other person. Uh, preferably a stranger, someone you don't know, someone you might not see again. I should warn you that I'm surrounded by animals right now. Lasha is sitting here on my right, is, and the uh, the birds are behind me. And so you may hear the birds, and you may hear Lasha. She likes to give love to the laptop. So if you hear a scratching of whiskers on the uh, computer, well, that's Lasha giving love to the laptop, and I'm not going to dissuade her from doing that. She's a very nice person. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the things that I've been talking about up to this point, uh, call the United States area code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. I would like to say hello to everyone in the chat room, and I'm only I'm not going to ask Miss and Tara to look. I'm just going to ask I'm just going to see what I can see without with a different kind of looking here. Let's see. Looks like I might have Steve Jarecki in there. Uh, Eileen and Rosemary are waiting on the phone. Looks like we have about eight people. Is that right, Amelia? Or is there more? That's about right, Chris, and no, there isn't more. That's about right. Okay. The other part of this program I would like to talk with you about 
walking with the grace. Part of the kundalini is your detoxification, which means that emotional traumas from the past are going to come out. And you need to understand that and you need to catch yourself before you blow up at somebody that has nothing to do with, with this detox. They just happen to be present. Make sure that you keep a very, very firm understanding of your emotions and why you're having them. You, know, you might get a lot of past emotions coming up in yourself. The Kundalini brings this stuff up for you to forgive, actively forgive it. Actively, and if you know whatever part you played in, you go ahead and forgive that too. This is not a one-time thing. This is something you do over and over and over and over. It's taken you how many years to go through the enough refinement in this lifetime to have the Kundalini come to you? How many years has it been? You know, five, six, ten, twenty, thirty years of living life and going through a refinement paradigm. And now the kundalini has come to you. Now it's beginning to loosen up some of the hurt and the pains and the habits that we have been uh, partaking of. And it's going to loosen those up so that it can get it balanced. It can get it out of your system to make room for a greater level of enlightenment within the body. And I know, I know some of you are looking and go, well, what do you mean make room? Enlightenment. Enlightenment is this. It doesn't take up space. It does and it doesn't. It takes up space in the in the sense that a certain quality of expression will come from a person that is having an enlightenment experience. A certain quality of expression will come from a person that is living through the, the continuous effects of past regrets, past violence, past hurt, past pain, past uh, impatience, past, you know, all the, all the challenges to the noble behaviors. And so as you forgive and you begin to, to balance out your personal emotional equation, whether you were at fault or somebody else was, you begin to, to offer more time and more space for expression from the enlightenment process. And part of that enlightenment expression is is going through your day feeling great, feeling loved, loving others. This is, this is not something that just fades away. This is something that is continuous, 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 continuous. And so I do suggest that you do the work. Get the detoxifications taken care of. Look at what you need to do to change your life in order to have a greater level of enlightenment come upon you. And these levels of enlightenment are typically uh, bursting with love, bursting with joy, bursting with happiness. Everywhere you look, you see artwork. You don't just see the world. You just see, uh, you know, divine artwork all around you. When you look in the eyes of a person, you see a god or a goddess. I mean... You are in love with life. You are in love with, with the divinity that flows through all aspects of life on this world. Inside yourself, you're in love. Outside yourself, you're in love. You're in love with, with dust motes on your floor. You're in love with a crack in the cement. You know, you're, you're in love with everything. And these are the levels of enlightenment and, and a soft form of bliss. I, I won't tell you that there's bliss because in my experience it is not. It, but it is a soft form of bliss that will take you right into bliss. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very short hop from, from the enlightenment experience to the blissfulness. Uh, but uh, the enlightenment experience is when all of a sudden you come into a new level of teaching or experience with the kundalini and then all of a sudden wham you are inside of joy you are inside of grace you are inside of love and the world is nice it is beautiful it is happy it is healthy it is wealthy you are healthy and wealthy with a level of love that nobody around you can really share 
Your spouse may be able to reflect some of that, and that's all good. That's all good, especially if they're supporting uh, the Kundalini as it go as it works its way with you. Uh, but it's an amazing, amazing level of experience, and I want to. Uh, I would like to ask Bashji if he would go ahead and give us a call, and uh, then we'll bring him on. There. You're awake. Hello. Hello. Wake up. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Hello, Kristen. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So were you dozing off a little bit there? No, it just sometimes takes a while for this blinking thing to react to my cursor. You know, I I put it on the red button and it just will not go red. <laughs> I am totally alert. Oh, I think this is Fashji here now, Prison. Oh, you have him here? Okay, all right. I'm bringing him on. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I know uh, that now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hi, hi, Fashji. I want, I want you to, to tell tell everybody about your experience that you currently have. Oh, you've already done it. <laughs> I was well, sitting here and I was saying, well, I won't have to say anything because he's pretty much describing this door I've just opened and uh, walked through. Um, so where do I start? Own, in your own words, my friend, when did this start happening? Um, honestly, Sunday night after we talked by Skype, I um, I started to do the Chitaka, um, both with um, the Sri Yantra and then the Master's Picture. And, of course, I, I, I always get this this giddy feeling when I when I have gotten a chance to have a Skype session with um, Chrism, and then the, it, it pretty much wanes. And, uh, of course, then I can get to sleep. As anyone knows, once you've been injected with this energy, it's pretty difficult to sleep. So I woke up the next day and um, I started to to really notice some some changes um, in my general overall being. I started to feel as if I was plugged into something, um, and I'm, I'm trying to. To, to be as, as humble as I can about this, I'd love to say, oh, me, I've just jumped into this enlightenment experience, and I don't know how to handle it, other than just to say, I surrender um, and allow it to, to happen. Um, even now, it is, right now, the, the, the energies uh, I'm experiencing are, are pretty much... Um, off the, the map as far as I had ever thought that this 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 whole teaching could bring about, but I'm in the midst of it, and uh, I, I, I'm so grateful to the Master for being patient with me and for finally seeing that um, I, I was ready um, and for just doing the and, and to my I'm grateful also to the Kundalini within me. Uh, for being ready uh, and being ready to completely and without reserve surrender to the Kundalini and surrender to the Master. And through these things, a miracle occurred for me. And I'm in the midst of it right now. And I have these moments where I can't express what's happening in words, but I, I'm trying to, uh, and I apologize to all of you in the archives and <laughs> especially those uh, on the uh, show now listening that um, indeed it does exist, and you simply need to follow what this man says. Um, he knows, and he can bring this about within you. Thank you, uh, Chrisom. Um, I can't 
imagine there's anything else I need to say. Um, well, thank, thank you, Father James. Stay on board if you can. Now, if any of you out there right now have a question for, for Fashi about his experience, and Fashi, if you'd be willing to take a few questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, if anybody would like to ask Fashi a question, please call in at 347 nine three four zero zero two six and we'll put you straight through to him. Uh, what happened that you can talk about uh during our Skype session on Sunday that you feel may have triggered this? I I think the sincerity of finally without reservation surrendering to you as my teacher. Um, I also there was something that you said um, that I had put in the time necessary to have this and now was my time and it was like something went off in my head Um, it was almost as if I was waiting for you to tell me that Well, I don't know if that makes sense at all. It does, it does, but I'm, I need to clarify this for, for people who are who are new to the to the language that we're speaking here. When Fashi says that he surrendered to me as his teacher, he surrendered to my Kundalini as his teacher. And for those who are listening, it, it it's 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 a point of understanding that when you surrender to any kind of a kundalini-oriented teacher, a person who has the awakened kundalini, it is always to the kundalini that the person surrenders to, always. Yes, yes, the physical the physical body is, is home of this kundalini, and yes, it is expressing through an individual personality that can speak the language, write the language, do whatever, but the main aspect of this is to surrender to the kundalini in the teacher, and that teacher uh, should know that. That teacher should know that. It should never be, oh, yes, you're surrendering to Christum and Christum this and Christum that. You know, it's not about that. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to say I, I was trying to get on um, on to the site tonight, Blog Talk Radio, and I was able to, I was able to pull it up, and I was listening to, you do the the, the album in the beginning, and the and then you read something from, is that Rick Veda, that you're reading from? No, it's the, the Radiance Sutra. Oh, okay. Anyway, and then I I noticed I said, well, he can't see that I'm here because we had spoken earlier, and you said. Can you make it? And you know, there I was. So I ultimately had to turn the computer off and then restart it because I, I don't know if it was the Kundalini or what, but it it had a problem starting up, and I'm, I'm so glad to be here uh, to be able to to uh, answer any questions and to be here with all of you. Um, it. it I'm, I'm lost for words. I'm absolutely lost for words. Well, yeah. So, so you know, having electrical problems while you're having kundalini phenomena is not uncommon. Uh, you, you know, the, the kundalini can literally fry a laptop. It can fry an electric watch or a telephone or, you know, these, these, these uh, cell phones that are like little mini laptops that can fry them. And so you did... To to just restart the computer, you did well to do that and to to begin with. And uh, feel free to get a tissue if you need to. Um, oh, you hear me sniffling in the back? Huh? Sorry about okay. that. Any, um, any, uh, anybody who would have a question for Fasci at this time, call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, I'm going to bring Amelia on, and I'm going to have her ask you a question. Now, give her a few minutes because she's got to wake up and come on board. <laughs> she never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> she never sleeps. 
<laughs> well, I suppose the first thing, I don't know if I have a question for you. I'll see if one comes. But um, I suppose the first thing is, you know, I can really feel your that surrender you're talking about without reservation that you gave. And I can feel and hear a change in you, Francis. You wonderful. know, we talked. <laughs> we did talk. And then, yes, yes, uh, I can tell you. Without reservation, my friend. Yes, I. You know the the what is it? The rabbit hole, or the the wormhole that the rabbit went. To, uh, what was it Alice in Wonderland? You know when you go yes. through this. Yes, it happened. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, Fashti, if and I can feel it. I'm really my gorgeous brother. <laughs> but you're lost. You're lost for words. I mean that on its own has never happened before. (laughs) (laughs) I was waiting for someone to see that. (laughs) Uh, I really, I I just don't have a question for you because I'm um, a little bit cheerful here myself because I'm, I'm, it's lovely. It's it's beautiful to hear that reservation is gone. (laughs) I'm, I'm, filled with um, gratitude for that and it's wonderful that that has happened. There is nothing like it, so there's not? <laughs> no, no, there's nothing like this. Um, it's like no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new way of seeing things. It's like Master was saying earlier, you know, when this happens, you start to see things differently. Um, it, it sets up an entirely different paradigm. Um, in, um, I'm just grateful uh, to you know me i i i had my doubts and doubt is a part of of the the path i think uh until you make a concrete decision to the kundalini within you and the kundalini within the master that this is really what you are about and uh, things start to change Things yes. start to really change. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody else would like to 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 ask him a specific question, Chris. And I just don't have one. <laughs> okay, no worries. I'll, I'll put you into the blue, my dear. Love you, fast. <laughs> Love you too. And uh, we're hot skipping and jumping over to Eileen Loro here. Hello, oh Eileen. Oh. Oh, well, there she Hello. is. Hi, Hello. Eileen. Hi. I'm yes. here. One of my very first friends on KAS1. One of my very best and That'll very lie. first. <laughs> How are you, Eileen? I'm fine. I'm being entertained by a helicopter <laughs> flying around the building. <laughs> <laughs> they they found again, did they? <laughs> I can't, I can't figure out why they're flying around the building, but anyway, it's hard to hear sometimes. But I you have understand. A, have a for, you have a question for Fosji? No, Eileen? really. No, I'm just enjoying listening to his uh, quietness. <laughs> Okay. No, I, All right. I, I can certainly say I'm grateful to you, Eileen, for everything that you do um, for the Kundalini uh, community and for me. Um, because, as I was about to say, well, you were one of the first to to extend the olive branch to me and you know say, oh. you know, it's okay. Come on in. If you have any questions, write me. Contact me. That was years ago. That that was a lot of years ago, and um, I want to thank you. You're right. You're this welcome. Is, this is a great place to be, and um, I only hope I can emulate um, all that you do um, selflessly for everyone within the Kundalini community. Well, Fashi, I just want to, I, I appreciate what you're saying, uh, and I just want to tell you your gift of uh, sharing 
and insight is very helpful to me and to other members of the community. I um, thank it's, you. It's very, uh, very succinct in what you say, uh, and it always comes through very um, from the heart. Very thank honest. You. And Thank I appreciate you. I appreciate your uh, your sharing. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a love fest we've got going on. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Eileen, enjoy your helicopter. I'm going to put you into the blue. Here. Thank you. I will. And then coming over to Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Kristen. How are you? I'm good. Happy Wednesday to you. And to you as well. I have Foschi on here who is having uh, uh, some some enlightenment experiences. Is there anything that you would like to ask him? I thank you. Uh, Also, as Eileen was saying, Foschi, you're very... um, you are expressed in what goes on, and you do tell us and share with us. So that's generous of you. As what else could I do? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, this is this is this is truly an expression of love, uh, and mm-hmm. just like you, um, that's all it is. Just an expression of love. Uh, and appreciation for all that we have and all that we're becoming. Um, Mm -hmm. I see this thing growing where it's it's really beginning to take off, and I'm wondering where Chrism's going to find extra time to do what what else is coming. (laughs) He doesn't sleep at all now. (laughs) So, so, So far... So far, well, you know, I would look, I would look forward to seeing you at. at uh, I'd like to meet you in person. I should uh, let everybody know, everybody's listening, that I've never met Bashi in person. The closest mm. I've met Bashi is is um, on Skype. Is that right, Bashi? That is correct. That is correct. So, so none of this happened face to face. This is all happening. Uh, through levels of technology uh, that that all of us listening to this program uh, are able to share, and so you don't have to to meet me face to face. However, as Rosemary may tell you, when you do come to a seminar, there is a shift in the energies that come forward to a person, and that shifting can be profound for people. Uh, have you experienced that, Rosemary? Yes. I know that, and, and that's why I'm working on this seminar now, because I know the, 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 the value, the importance, and it just takes a willingness. It's all I had when I was going. I didn't understand or know what Kundalini was, but I was listening to the promptings in my heart and to uh, connect with you when it was over, to stay connected to you. I have great trust for you and for all that you provide and your trust of me and what you say to me uh, better than I know for myself, for sure. What what so, spiritual uh, experience had you uh, been part of before you came to the seminar? Well, how far back should I go? Fifteen years old. Oh, and I'm fifteen years old. Yes, my my response was to be, and believe and know that that God wanted me to do what I was looking ahead to do, and I I gave my parents and my family like ten days' notice, and I was there with the sisters, and they knew me, so I didn't go through elaborate process to to be received but and I was there for 25 years and there was another prompting and actually I would say that God had a harder time actually um, directing me to to leave that 
community than he did getting me in um, because <laughs> I perceived myself as a lifetime member and and the, the sisters were dwindling in number and I thought well that's I'll I'll turn out the light I'll be the last one here and those little promptings they would come so that and then community of a marriage and and being guided and directed and uh, through that and the family that I have as as a result of that marriage, um, I I joined. I've always been a member of a Catholic community, so those have varied in their gifts to me, some more than others. And again, the the uh, the next to the last uh, community that I belong to, it was guidance. Again, it was clear to me, and I mean, I didn't have the guidance and didn't know, but I knew I was to look for some other place, a Catholic community, and I did that, and and that was is amazing. I also was guided and directed to a meditation center, and I was there for four or five years, and and just open and willing, and but nothing has provided what this seminar did, and staying connected to you and your guidance and my surrender to my kundalini, through your kundalini. Uh, I'm not at the, the place where Fashti is, where Amelia is, but I, I'm in my journey and I have all the trust in the world. This is moving along. And I, well, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you for, for that. And... Uh, I'm going to put you in the blue, my dear, and I believe we have a caller here. So thank you, Rosemary. Okay. We'll see. So Hello, caller. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, caller. Are you there? Yeah, we'll just put them in the blue there. Uh, Amelia, can you go and and talk to the caller? There we go. Thank you very much. Well, uh, oh, I see. Fast you went to the caller. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. There we are. Okay. Uh, Fast are you there? No, I see. Okay. Putting you back on. There you go. Hello again. Are you there? Wow. Mm. Well, mm. the other parts of me. Um. <laughs> Are you there, Fast G? <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> Barely, but yes. Okay, right. Just, I, won't, um, I, won't, I won't keep you too long at this, but uh, I okay. did want people to to feel the level of grace that you're having. Um, I want I wanted them to feel it through your voice, through the 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 perceptions that a person can have about a person uh, that they can hear but maybe not see. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to congratulate you. Pashti for 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 doing all the work, for doing all the stuff that that, that God gave you the, the guidance to do, and and thank everybody in your past. Thank everyone from Paul Twitchell on up yes. to to everyone who gave you yes. any kind of assistance, and even those who, who gave you a hard time. <laughs> Be thankful for them yes. as well. I think they were the most valuable lessons, so I I thank you. (laughs) And give give your wife a big hug and a kiss because, you know. I certainly will. She's uh, on her her way in, and, you know, um, every Wednesday we we have this thing. I let her in. She says, oh, quiz I'm on. I said, yes, well, I know where you'll be. And uh, and (laughs) she knows I come back up to the office, and um, I listen. And um, she's coming in now. So uh, this is a good time for me to drop off and say hello to her and come back. All right. Put you in the blue, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of us. 
oops, sorry. You know, when you're when you're in this studio, you know, you you press this button and you don't know how long it's going to take. And so I, I I apologize for cutting Fosse off there. And evidently the other caller can't be heard, so we'll just continue. Amelia, if you could check back with the caller at a oh there you are hello. I- I, hi, cousin. I have. I can't hear the caller, but I'm assuming because they are still there, they can hear you. So, if that caller wants to ask a question, if they press the number one uh, question mark will come up, and I'll put them through to you. Then there is a question from the chat room, actually. Um, so I'll read that out from Elizabeth, and um, she has a question for Fashti or anyone, um, right. and maybe. If that she comes back later, he can be asked again. But as of now, what can you do when you go through periods of feeling down or unworthiness? Is the only way I know how to put it, question mark. So what can you do when you go through periods of feeling down or unworthiness? Uh, those are levels of detox. That's something that the the ego would have come up with, that you're not worthy or that you're feeling down because you're not worthy. Uh, these are levels of detox. You recognize them as detoxification. You see them as detoxification, and you just let them take their course and realize that as soon as they began and as soon as you realized that this is a form of detoxification, you already know that the end point is coming or it's already there. You do not need to become a victim of your own ego. This is not a requirement. The requirement is to have as much information as you can about why you're feeling a certain way. And if you're inside of the Kundalini and the Kundalini is loosening things up for you, such as, you know, am I, am I worried? Or, geez, you know, I don't feel so good today. Why is that? Um, what is setting me off? What, what little thing, what kind of self? Uh, imagery or self-understanding am I partaking of that allows me to feel, uh, you know, not so happy, not so so lively? And what part of my uh, personal validation do I need to recognize so that I know that I am worthy? There really, I mean, if, if, if a person knows about the word kundalini, knows the word, knows you know, has a good idea of what it means, that almost in and of itself can be an invitation into the Kundalini uh, if the person is willing to take the steps to say, doing a practice like the safeties or anything like that. Now, those that would be unworthy for the Kundalini but might still know the word would be the magicians, the people that are doing magic, people that are uh, working with subtle energies in order to take away the choices of other people or to control them or to, you know, do things of that nature. And these are the people that would not be worthy of the Kundalini yet. They're still in a refinement phase. You know, they still have to have power, give themselves power by depriving others of it. And so these folks, you know, they would they would have... If they had an awakening, awakening at all, it would be the kundalini that would come to them and begin to reorganize their thought patterns into a way that allows them to to uh, correct some of those errors that they would be making. Uh, but for the most part, when you're feeling and you don't feel worthy, it's just an invitation from your kundalini, from your uh Intimate equation to begin to look at your ego and make those conscious corrections. So if you're not feeling worthy, then turn right around, look yourself in the mirror and say, I am worthy of the Kundalini. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of acceptance. I am worthy of surrender. I am worthy of strength. I am worthy of hope and patience and trust and joy and beauty and happiness. I am worthy for all of these and any of these in any combination they want to come. And as you do that, you will notice that your feeling of down 
will dissipate. It's an invitation, really, to begin to take control over how you feel. Let, let your kundalini, your higher mental functioning self, take control, not taking control in an egocentric uh, sort of way, but being able to look at life in a different perspective and allow that difference in perspective to begin to modulate uh, how you experience life uh, as it comes to you in these in these different forms. So that's what I would suggest at, at this point for a person that is going through this, um, Elizabeth. And uh, feel free to ask a follow-up question for that. And if you want to call, you can call 347 uh, Are there other questions, Amelia? Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> no, Chris, and there are no other questions. <laughs> I think one of one of the wonderful things about um, this radio show and about all your teachings for a Kundalini, I mean, one of the wonderful things about CAD Kundalini Awakening Systems, however one accesses it, is the information that is given. Because I can remember at the beginning of my process, you know, exactly the things that Elizabeth asked about there and hearing the information that you gave now. And it made such a difference to me. Such a difference. It's amazing that once you once you know these things that you can, you know, make that conscious correction and it makes such a difference to the whole thing. When you don't follow your ego or when you, you don't become what did you say? A victim of your ego because it's so easy to do that. And uh, because it's that is also well for me anyway at different times would have been um not accelerated, but, and you know, big. It would have been bigger. And so it's just wonderful to know what to do. So, again, I'm just feeling gratitude for the information that comes to us as Kundalini Awakening people, you know. So thanks. <laughs> well, thank you for, for expressing it so well. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of information with, within, a, within a Kundalini equation goes a very, very long way. And uh, I encourage everyone here, everyone who's listening right now uh, in the chat room, but also go back and listen to the other programs. Uh, there's some sort of a way where you can bring it up on your iPod. You can download them. Download them. Listen to them. They won't be up there forever. I'm sure of that. Okay. Download them. Listen to them. Repeatedly, there are levels of information that you will not hear the first time around. Those are just invitations. The first time you hear one of these conversations is really the invitation. The second and the third time you listen to the conversation is where some of the very, very deep transmissions and meanings will come to the person. So do revisit, uh, revisit conversations. Now, I'd like to bring uh, Rosemary back on. Rosemary, prepare yourself here. Well, while she's coming on, can I just say that Elizabeth says thank you. It makes a difference. And she says, I think the ego was struggling with the Kundalini, and I am very grateful for this information so she can deal with it. Oh, absolutely, Elizabeth. And, And make sure that you thank your Kundalini. It's your kundalini that is doing this, your kundalini that is guiding you, helping you, and know that, and by knowing that, know that you are worthy of this, or you wouldn't be having it. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Hey, I'd like to make your seminar announcement, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Thank you. And this in, this announcement is in invitation to everyone listening there in the chat room today and uh, in the archives. Our seminar in Minnesota is the end of September 27 and 28. And there's uh, my email address, contact information. Please email me with any questions you have. It is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. And I would want to say Eileen has been so helpful in the contacts that she has, and they remember her from three years ago. 
And the recent one, Kristen, if you want to share with us your an, a web radio interview that will be played the first time a week from tomorrow, and I have the information about that that I would like to give people. We also will post it, and Eileen and I will be back to posting about the seminar, so keep watching for that. But, Kristen, can you tell us something about the interview that took place that Monday? Well, the, the interview, was, the, uh, it was, it was a, an interesting interview. Uh, a wonderful woman by the name of Catherine uh, was the interviewer, and uh, she basically asked questions that... Uh, about the kundalini and about uh, you know certain uh, vectors of interaction with the kundalini, I think I think the it's best to just have people go to that uh, to that um, interview and let the interview speak speak for itself. I uh, I'll be posting it on the various sites, the uh, the Yahoo group, the Facebook groups. Um, you know they will have it, and and uh, we'll be posting we'll be posting that link uh, to that program it is the Edge program, and I believe the Edge comes out as a hard copy magazine as well, uh, Rosemary. Yes, that's the name of the magazine. So some of it may be printed in that magazine as well. Am I correct? Oh, after yes, I uh, yeah. Eileen would remember that. Yes, it will be in one of the magazines. And so any anybody in, in uh, the central United States and central Canada that would like to come uh, to the seminar, please contact Rosemary at rosemarygg at uh, U.S. Internet, right? Dot yes, com. dot com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to thank you, and I would like to thank you and Eileen for organizing that. Uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for those in in that area and who would like to come uh, to to meet with me and to discuss, uh, say, some personal issues if you have them with me in regards to your to your Kundalini awakening equation. Uh, meeting uh, meeting somebody with Kundalini uh, like this is is an uncommon event, and I would uh, I would ask that you partake of it. Uh, we we need this this world more than ever. This this world, with Fukushima, with with the various uh, uh, destabilizations of humanity in different parts of this world, uh, we need more enlightened people. And it's, it's happening. It's occurring. And uh, I would just as soon help anybody uh, who wishes my help uh, to come in to the enlightenment. Equations in as balanced and, and serene and, and way as possible, based in love, based in understanding, based in information, and based in wisdom. Wisdom is very important. When you have great power, you need to have great wisdom, and this wisdom comes to a person vis-a-vis the Kundalini. The Kundalini is the storehouse of wisdom, and it will download wisdom about certain things to your brain uh, of its own. And the, the, the task for the individual is to take the ego out of the way or out of the position of interpreting wisdom that the Kundalini gives. And therefore, you know, maybe putting an ego egotistic stamp or signature on it, whereas uh, I try to give the information as cleanly from the Kundalini as possible, and I think this is why uh, there are various levels of success with regards to the seminars and with regards to the Shakti Pot, which which is Sanskrit for transference of energy uh, that is able to come through me into other people. So let that be. Be known. Let that be known. And when is the date of the seminar, Rosemary? September 27 and 28. And what time? And the, um, the nine to five, both days. And there's a reception uh, Friday evening, 7 p.m. at the okay. hotel where we'll be having the seminar. And then 
anybody from out of town would be staying. And it's the, in the town of Egan, E-G-A-N, right? E-A-G, E-A-G-E-N. E-A-G-E-Egan. Egan, Minnesota, which I believe is near to where? Well, it's near the airport, most importantly, but it is also uh, at the St. Paul side of the river. And um, well, it's 10 minutes from me, too. That's helpful. Okay. All right. Well, very, very good. Very good. Thank you, my dear. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, and thank you for sharing that good news. So once again, if you have any questions of myself or Amelia Centara, uh, please call this number, 347-934-0026. When you come into the equation the way that Fashi has come into it, uh, there are levels of confidence and competency that are increased, uh, sometimes exponential. Now, what Fasci didn't tell you was that I gave him some practices to do uh, that were also very, very, very helpful. And one of these practices is to surrender yourself to the kundalini of the teacher that that you have been given or that you have selected. So if so, if a person has selected uh, Chrisom as a teacher, then the certain practice that is given will be towards the kundalini in Chrisom, not in the, shall we say, the mundane personality of Chrisom, even though that, you know, year by year that, that slowly disappears. Uh, there are levels of practice that raise the, the Shakti Kundalini from its earth-based uh, abode, shall we say, raises it at least, you know, four to five, or maybe even, maybe not, maybe like 3.5 feet uh, into the sacred male, okay? into the sacred male. And this practice is extremely helpful in igniting a, an enlightenment sequence that, that uh, Vashti is currently going, going uh, with and within. And I'll suggest that any and all of you who want to do this should do this. If you want to Skype with me, email me at kfire for all. So it's K F I R E. F as in Frank, O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. And then uh, we'll exchange a few emails and we'll get some times and dates and, and set that up for you. Um, it's important to me that people, more and more people come into the Kundalini. They need to come into it safely and with their sanity intact. And this is what is given this is what is taught here. This is not about uh, adulation for an, a personality. This is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, adoration for a, a spiritual belief system. This is not about any of those things. This goes beyond that. This goes straight into the divine, and it is adoration of the divine. It is bonding with the divine within the individual, with it between you and your kundalini. And your kundalini will direct you. I get plenty of people that are directed to work with me in very specific ways. And, and I, if this is happening to you, then I encourage you to contact me and let's get the ball rolling in you as well. Uh, one thing that it is very, very good for you to understand is that uh, be as communicative about this with your spouse as you feel you can. Some spouses will just not be able to even hear the word kundalini. Some spouses will will automatically reject it if it's not something in their own belief system or something that, that corroborates their own understanding of reality. Uh, many spouses will totally get behind you with this. Many spouses will be supportive and helpful and want to to walk with you into these areas and and what a great blessing they are uh, if you have a spouse like say Fashji does and 
and uh, Amelia does, and you know, and, and the other folks that have spouses that are supportive of their Kundalini equation, it's a big, big deal. It's a big deal. It's very, very helpful. If you do have a spouse that you can talk with about this subject with, uh, keep them apprised of where you're going with it, what's happening with it, and and uh, keep keep yourself uh, out of danger. If you have a spouse that isn't going to hear you, that you know would just as soon you know commit you to a psych ward if you do anything different. Well, you may you may want to not be so communicative with them along those lines. The Kundalini will typically, I shouldn't say typically, but often, shall we say, if, a, if one spouse is getting in the way, consistently in the way of a of the other spouse's spiritual evolution, that that partnership, that union, may be terminated by the Kundalini. Kundalini can do that. Uh, it is the hand of God, and the hand of God is not pushed off your shoulder. You don't slap the hand of God because it's reaching out to help you. Okay, nor do you allow your spouse to slap that hand. So be very careful, and yet also be open and appreciative, and and uh, go deeper into your surrender as deep as you can safely do it. Uh, without putting yourself in jeopardy, whether it be emotional jeopardy or, uh, you know, jeopardy with a job or you know, the ability to drive or to, to do what you need to do in order to make your way through the world. Uh, what Fashi is having right now, you can drive. You can. You just become a really good driver. <laughs> you let people ahead of you. You're, you're, very, you're, you're the kind of driver that everybody wants to be, you know, it's, Wow, he's so nice. He's so happy. He's such a what a good gosh. He let me in, and nobody else would let me in. And da 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 da. Right? You, well, anybody's been stuck stuck in traffic. We know what that's about. So you become a very good driver. Um, it, it's it doesn't impugn your focus. You can stay very focused on the wheel, very focused on the people in different cars around you. And uh, and it does not mess up your ability to interrelate with other people. Now, it, if you're if you're in a position where you're supposed to be mean all the time, that may be a little more challenging for you. Um, that that yeah, that can definitely be challenging. But if you're not in in that type of a scenario where you have to be mean, uh, well then then you can do you can do this very well. You can do this very, very well, and it will do you very, very well. Okay, these are some of the gifts that are beyond money. The Kundalini is really beyond attachments, uh, because we're in the West, and the West, you know, the technological countries, you know, we're, we're really. Uh, kind of uh, guided and instructed to collect things, to to collect uh, jewelry, computers, books, homes, cars, bicycles, guns, you know, sometimes girlfriends or boyfriends. I mean, you know, it's, it's very much a, a have and to own scenario, a have and to own scenario. And Salini will begin to break up that pattern. It will begin to break up the idea that you are what you have. Okay, that will no longer be the operating system for you. You will no longer relate or validate yourself by virtue of what you have or don't have. So if you're if you're a wealthy wealthy individual, well, you'll no longer get to see yourself that way, or feel yourself that way. If you're a poor poor individual, well, you won't be so tied up in in not having money or not having power or position. Okay. We get changed. We get pulled away from these egocentric self uh, um, self validations 
you know, we no longer will operate from a system of winners or losers, um, fear of loss or want of gain, okay? Uh, if you do have fear of loss, want of gain, it would be within a spiritual context. And it's not to say that, you know, great wealth won't come your way. It certainly may come your way. It's just your your ideation and your and your inner dialogue may not be so geared towards uh having more wealth at the cost of everything else that's a very important distinction if you have more wealth but it 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 messes up your health well what good is your wealth if you have no health how's that going to serve you you don't get to take wealth of a material nature with you when you die. You do get to take Kundalini with you when you die. Kundalini comes with you because it's not specifically of this world. You know, it's also the hand of the divine, and the hand of the divine follows you into your death. And it really does. Just, you know, I'm not pulling this, you know, out of thin air. This really does occur. And then, you know, depending upon your karma, you know, you may be brought into this world one more time as a kundalini awakened child like I was. And you may have to live through that level of ignorance and innocence and, and, uh, and, and you know, reawaken the kundalini for that specific body and then, boom, go out into the world and give the grace that is flowing through you into this world. But you don't have to wait to be born again and have the kundalini follow you into death. You can do this right now, and I encourage you to do this right now. Rosemary, uh, about a year and a half ago, and you know, this is a woman who has constantly been helping uh, people who are who are impoverished. Uh, this is a woman. Rosemary goes out and she. She finds the homeless people. She'll buy them coats out of the thrift store. She'll buy them shoes. She'll sew them a sleeping bag. You know, this is a person who is spending a lot of her time bettering the comfort levels and the survival levels of those she doesn't even know. This is a woman who is walking the walk of divinity talking the talk of divinity. And so, of course, her kundalini is coming to her. And that, you know, that it chose me as a vector for her, well, I am honored to be chosen as a vector for her or for Fasci or Amelia or Eileen or any any of you, Julie, Steve, Stephen White. I mean, I am honored to be working with all of you, and I'd like to work with you even more so. And I think that's going to start happening. I've, I've uh, received uh, some assistance from from Leia from Leia Symphony, and she was out here visiting, and and uh, she's given some great assistance. I've been given some assistance from from uh, others who helped me to pay a bill. I had a bill uh, that I couldn't pay that had to do with keeping the safeties on the internet, and so. I was I'm very grateful to to say that uh, the community helped me to pay that bill. This is the stuff that when you donate to me that I'm able to do, I'm able to pay the hosting rates or you know any of the other uh, financial charges that come along including uh internet charges. However, I've been I've been uh, assisted by Magdalene de Deus out of France, and she is helping me to get internet in the house so I don't have to keep driving to cafes. And so I want to thank uh, Magdalene de Deus and, and uh, Leia Symphony, Amelia Centara, uh, Rosemary, and Eileen, all of these people, Vashti, all of the people have helped this program uh, uh, in, to amazing levels. Uh, Eileen has helped us from so far back. I mean, I think the first trip I took with her across the the country was in 2007. And uh, and uh, Amelia and her husband John is the reason why we even have this radio program. 
if you see fit to to help continue this information, then do uh, follow the directions that Amy has so kindly given at the beginning of the program and, and make the donation. This is what it goes forward to. It goes into outreach. It goes into outreach. Now, I have uh, the ability now to to really begin to put the books together. This is what I'm going to start focusing on in a big way, is putting the books together. I have about five or six books on Kundalini that are already there. They're just waiting to be written in a format that a publisher would like. So... Uh, you know, as the first one gets in, and we'll go ahead and we'll talk about some of these subjects. Uh, if you have a question right now, I have 39 minutes left here. If you have a question right now that about any aspect of your Kundalini Awakening equation, feel free to call 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. And uh, feel free to call. Amelia Centara will, will take your call, and uh, and she'll either direct you to to directly to me, or she'll you know put you on in, in a place where you can just listen on your telephone. So, uh, Amelia, are there any other questions from the uh, chat room? No, Kuzum, and there are no other questions at all. Uh, um, Fast, you did make a ha 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 laughing out loud comment when you were speaking about driving, <laughs> oh. and, and how and, and and yeah, driving with love and consideration. So I think he might be experiencing that too. <laughs> well, so no, no questions. Okay, thank you, thank you, Amelia. So as you come in to a, a greater level of interaction with the Kundalini, as Fash has done, uh, you begin to have perspective shifts. Uh, your perspective about life is shifting. Your perspective about the beauty of life is shifting. Uh, to some degree, the love that you feel in, in these moments will we'll gently erase some of the anxieties and some of the issues that are causing uh, discomfort or a lack of self-esteem in the individual. Now, one thing that, that I do want to put out there is sometimes these, these, these moments of enlightenment come and they go. They come and they go. Sometimes they stay for a really, really long time, and, and that person becomes that expression. They're not, they are no longer given the option of not being the expression of that Kundalini enlightenment. And, and this is what I'm really looking at with, with uh, Fashji and with some of the other folks who are having this right now is to just perpetuate it by honoring it, perpetuate it by living it, perpetuate it by having it uh, illuminate you. And take take this illumination and make it real for yourself make it real let it be who you are now no longer fall backwards into oh well since i've been this way for so long then this is the way it has to be and you know you you kind of following the 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 Eeyore type of path, you know, the the donkey from Winnie the Pooh, uh, you know, Eeyore, oh, yes, 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 Eeyore, you're always a grouch. Okay, you don't have to be that grouch anymore. Nalini will lift you out of those, those heavy uh, concerns and levels of expression and levels of consciousness. It is not necessary for you to stay there. If you want to visit there every now and again, fine, go ahead. But you don't have to stay there. It does not have to become your sculpting of life. What will become the sculpting of your life will be these enlightenment experiences where you're walking around your life in a soft level of bliss. Bliss that isn't so strong that it it freezes you in your tracks. That isn't so strong that it that it causes heave with tears and, 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 and sobbing with joy. Bliss that 
isn't so strong that you know you 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 can't do anything other than experiencing it. This is a level of bliss that in in the Western societies is really the best kind, because this kind of bliss, this kind of enlightenment experience, uh, allows you to be society the kundalini blessed person. People will feel it. Sometimes less is more. So the, the the further you go away from ecstatic bliss and you just you come into a gentle level of bliss uh, that is constant, people will feel that more than if you were to slam them up against the wall with a huge level of of, of life altering bliss. These levels that that Fashi may be having right now and other people that I know are having. These levels of bliss really aid the the direction of society, really aid in the the gifting of certain wisdoms and certain feelings and certain understandings that allow for a person to stand next to you and make a better choice. Whatever that choice may be, you know, that by that I mean a more loving, a more compassionate, a more tolerant, and more patient choice than perhaps they were thinking about making before, whether it be with a small kid they're pushing around in the grocery store or to the teenager that they're taking to school. The scenario is is these gentle levels of bliss are they're they're very profound in how they affect other people through the level of serenity of your actions. So when you have these soft levels of bliss, you have levels of serenity that are almost tangible. Like you hold serenity in your hand and give it to another person. And I suggest that you do that. Give handfuls of serenity, handfuls of love, handfuls of patience and and uh, understanding and compassion and trust and sincerity. Give handfuls of these noble behaviors to yourself and to those around you. You can give and give and give and give to those around you, but don't forget to give to yourself as well, even though I know the Kundalini is doing that when it comes to you in that way. Um, so, yeah. Now, I have 32 minutes left, and, and I welcome anybody to call in now uh, so that, you know, if, they're, if they have a or an answer or a, a question about their Kundalini awakening process, feel free to, to let us know to, uh, to call in and talk about it. Yeah. And yes. just say that Fashji has stated in the chat room that he will definitely be in Minnesota at the seminar. Ah, well, now there's a blessing. There's a true blessing right there. There's a blessing. And And I'd like to invite Sigrid and John, too, up to Canada to come down as well. Sigrid and John, this is your personal invitation. (laughs) (laughs) And Elizabeth also asks, could you give the email one more time? That's your own email, I think, Chris. Ah, K as in Kundalini, fire. Uh, F I R E F O R A L L. So K Fire for All. K F I R E F O R A L L at Yahoo dot com, and uh, and we can have a Skype chat or just a, exchange a few emails. Uh, whatever your levels of comfort dictate is what we can do. I want to I want to take a moment to really reach out and. And thank Amelia Satara and her husband, John, uh, for allowing this program to even exist. So thank you, both of you. I would like to thank Eileen for the support that she has given uh, the KAS-1 and continues to give the KAS-1 community. And the support that she's given to me on a personal level, Eileen, thank you. Thank you on behalf of everyone, and thank you uh, for your help uh, to me on a personal level. Thank you, Eileen. I would like to thank Rosemary for also her her assistance 
uh, in responding to her guidance about the Kundalini and giving herself completely to the Kundalini and to her Kundalini teacher and to really be, you know, she is so emblematic of, of the walking, talking uh, Holy Grail. And I want to thank you, Rosemary, for 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 getting that into society. And I want to thank all of you who are who are listening. Uh, the the uh, the twenty eight ninety six telephone caller who's listening, and the six nine five four telephone caller who's listening, uh, and everybody in the chat room that I can't see. I want to thank all of you for for bringing yourselves into this information and and hopefully for bringing levels of of expression of this information into your life. I want to thank you for doing that as well. I'm going to go ahead and end this program a little bit early. One of the reasons being is that I only have a certain amount of data on these little boxes. And until I get uh, the... the, the uh, the Wi-Fi here in the house, once again, I have to be careful with how much uh, uh, data I use on these little Verizon Internet boxes. So I would like to thank all of you for, for joining uh, myself and Amelia and Eileen and Ms. Marion Gladys, everybody uh, who's come on. Elizabeth, thank you for your excellent questions. And uh, I look forward to having a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening process this time next week. And so I would like to bring Amelia on. Amelia, hello. Hello, Corinna. I'd like to say thank you uh, for being my co-host. And uh, if you'd like to say anything before we sign off. No, thank you to all the listeners. Thanks to everybody in the chat room, to Fashji who um, my heart is singing still from listening to his voice and what he shared with us today and to everybody who partook of the program and to you, Chrism, for the time, for the wonderful Kundalini information for your teachings. Greatly appreciated. See everybody next week. Same time, same channel. (laughs) Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.